Shalom, brothers and sisters. This week's Thursday thought, I want to talk to you about membership and the Fellowship of Christ. For those that have known me for quite a while, you realize that, yes, I am eating some humble pie right now. Because the last thing I want to do is build a church. I want to be there for the spiritually homeless. I want to create a safe place for those with spiritual PTSD. And I really want to build an ecumenical movement. But at the end of the day, I once again have to concede and do the things that the Lord has called and asked me to do. So I want to talk about membership in the kingdom and what our goals are and why this is important at this time. When we organized the fellowship, we worked in 2018 and 2019 to put a document together, which was approved by the Council of Elders and eventually voted on as canon. I don't know if canon is the right word, but voted on as acceptable to turn into the state of Ohio so that we could be a nonprofit church. There were three documents, and one of these was what is now Section 3C in Doctrines of the Saints. And this is the bylaws of the Church of Jesus Christ and Christian Fellowship. Article 2 expresses eight points that are the purpose of this fellowship. And I'm not going to go over all of them. But I'm going to go over the first one. To establish a Christian church with a school of the prophets and with missionary literature educational and all other resources it may deem useful to propagate and practice the full gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and for its service to the community. So what does that mean currently? It means I'm making a lot of videos. We even started writing some articles again. But it's so impersonal. I keep talking to these people who they want a church. They want a place they can belong. And I can try to help find a place for them, but they feel called here. So I prayed on this, and one of the biggest problems with trying to be an ecumenical movement and trying to meet the needs of spiritual homeless is that once you start doing anything that appears like a church, people are like, aha, you're trying to convert us to this church. You're, you're just a, a new prophet guy who's out there trying to get us to come away from wherever we are and join this new thing. And I want to be clear that nothing can be further from the truth. What I want is to establish a school of the prophets. I want people from all different faiths, not even the Latter-day Saint faith. I don't, I don't care what you are. You can be Buddhist. If you believe in the teachings of Jesus Christ, <clears throat> excuse me, if you believe in the teachings of Jesus Christ, let's come and learn together. We are called to be a prophetic people. The whole point of the Book of Mormon is to unlock that spirit of prophecy and revelation in us so that we can be that prophetic people. But in order to do that, there has to be people. And I've got to stop turning people away as you guys come and say, hey, you invited me to come and see. It's got to be more than just watching videos. So I've talked to some people and we've put a council together. We're putting a council together. We're not fully there yet, but we're, we're getting there. And we have goals. And I'm going to share these goals with you, and I want to share why you are important to these goals. Right now, I record a Sabbath service every Saturday. That's, that's my Sabbath. And I present it on Sunday because that's what most Christians use as their Sabbath. And because it's on YouTube, anybody can watch it whenever they want. And, you know, it's it gets fair reception. Usually gets a, each video gets about 30 views, which in my mind is a congregation. So that's great. People are worshiping from home. But if you've been watching them and you've been watching these videos, you know that the Lord has told me it's time for the people to gather. It's time for the saints to gather. So you can't just sit at home and watch a video. You can. Don't get me wrong. If that's what you're doing. That's where you're at. Do it. But we need to do more. I need to do more. 
I'm, I'm not doing enough. And part of the problem is that I alone am not enough. So how do we get there? Well, if right now we're, we're here, we are, Dave is making videos, and you are watching them, you're feeling the Holy Spirit, and you feel like you're a part of something, that is a great solid foundation that is based on the gospel of Jesus Christ. We need to build on that. Jesus said, when two or more gather in my name. So the next step has to be, do we watch these videos together? Do we start recording these as a, a live service, and then you watch them later at a time convenient for you? I don't know. That's what we're trying to figure out. But we've got to do something that has more involvement with people, and that's why this council has been put together. My personal goal is to get to a point to where I'm on the council, but really they're running this so that I can focus on other things. I'm, I am getting stretched too thin. I'm not going anywhere, and I'm going to constantly keep doing the best I can to, to do everything the Lord's called me to do. But the reality is that I'm still only one person, and being a finite being, I am trapped in the reality of time. And I have a family, and I've got to take care of them, too. So, I need your help. And this is the help that I need, and this is what we're trying to do. We've got some brothers. We have some brothers that have volunteered to help make the videos, help be a part of the council. And when I say be a part of the council, I mean, they're, they may not show up in any videos, but they're there with us in the meetings to discuss better ways to do this. And that's what I said before. Showing up matters. Being a body here does matter. You're welcome to visit, go back to whatever church you came from. If you don't have the church, you're welcome to stay here as long as you need to. But the more people that are here, the more people don't feel alone when they show up. So, in this council, I'm going to tell you point blank, we need sisters. We need sisters desperately. I know that there are women that are called, and I know that a lot of women are fighting in their various churches to try to get them to ordain them. So here's the thing. If the Lord calls you and you're a woman to come here to the fellowship, please stop fighting with your church. We're here. Because everything happens in the Lord's time and in the Lord's way. And if you stay a member of that church, whatever denomination it is, and we ordain you and you're in both, you're bringing your priesthood, the power of God, as a representative, a minister of Christ, back to your church because you may not be able to use those keys in your church but you're welcome to use them here and you still have them so i, I know women are being called and we have ordained a number of women we need women on this council so that is one of our goals so if we're here let's see the camera here we're here oh, yeah ground level there we go this is Dave recording videos. You can bump it up a little bit. We have other people making the videos. We're recording videos and people are watching the videos. Great start. And Jesus said that when two or more gather in my name, there I am. So can we gather online together more than just in these meetings on how to make and record this video? Can we watch the video together? Do we record a live service and then put that out? I don't know. That's what the council is for, is to try to figure out the answers to these types of questions. But the next one has to be more involvement. So the next, the next two steps here, it's got to be more than just me. So more than just me. And then it's got to be we're doing this in a way that the people who aren't on the council have a place to come, talk about whatever it is they want to talk about, and fellowship in Christ. Then, after that, the, the biggest problem I run into is I have people in Africa, Australia, Europe that want to talk to me. And it's hard enough with people 
I'm in I'm on the you know East Coast time. You got people in Alaska, in California, Oregon, Washington. The Pacific time and Alaskan time. We have enough time zone issues here in the U.S. It gets even worse once we start talking about the world. We go global. So once we get to a point to where we are fellowshipping together as saints, we need to start divvying this up so that it can be regional. And as that grows, we want to build temples. We want to start with a tabernacle. Imagine, I'm just going to use the United States because it's the continental United States because it's easy. I've, I've left out Hawaii at this point. I haven't talked to anybody in Hawaii yet. But I'm in the East Coast. So let's say that we build a tabernacle. My wife and I get our kids in the van and we start driving across country. We set up this tabernacle and people can come and worship from as far off as, as they desire. It's not going to be easy, but it's got to be the next goal. And then we've got to get out of the United States. We've got to get to Canada. We've got to get to Mexico. We've got to get to Europe, Africa, Australia. We've got to bring the gospel to the world. This gospel, I mean, the gospel is in the world. Don't get me wrong. We've got to help the, the, the spiritually homeless everywhere is what I'm trying to say. And as, and I'm going to tell you, you know, I know there are people who are like, oh, no one's going to drive that far. Well, when I was younger in the Salt Lake City Church, we drove all the way from Columbus, Ohio to Washington, D.C., an all-day trip just to go to the temple. So if it's a tabernacle that's traveling, it's not going to be every week. It's not going to be every month. <clears throat> it may be a once-in-a-lifetime thing for some people. But they'll have the opportunity to, to be there, to, to take part in this. Eventually, we like to get to a point where we're building temples. We like to find three key places where we as saints can come together. The scriptures say that we're supposed to come together and worship. We need to build places. And maybe it's a traveling tabernacle at first. I don't know. But we need to find places so we can gather and we can pilgr pilgrimage. Where are these places? We don't know. But as we're growing regionally, it's going to help us figure that out. And as we have the financial means and the need, we will begin to build temples. We want to dot the earth with temples. And when I say temples, I've talked about this before, non-denominational temples. You have a small, strangite congregation with five people. Come and worship in our temple. It's there for you. You're in a branch of Community of Christ that's really small and you're having trouble maintaining your building. We want to build a temple. So that you can worship there, sell your building, and, and fellowship there. You're a Brighamite church, and you're in an area. I grew up in an area where, when I was in that in that sect, the Salt Lake City Church, the small town I lived in didn't. No one wanted to sell them a church. Yeah, they've got lots of money, but if no one's willing to sell in an area, they're kind of stuck. Well, what if we have a temple there? They can come and they can worship. They can use that building. But that isn't going to happen today. It's not going to happen tomorrow. This, These goals take time. It's a step-by-step-by-step-by-step -step 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 process. But the ultimate goal is to worship the Lord in person, to fellowship as Christians in person, in our temples, our non-denominational temples. How do we get there? That's where you come in. In Article 5, sorry for the long pause there, it goes over what it means, how, basically how to become a member. And I'm going to read this. And yes, I know I'm 15 minutes in. Membership in the Church of Jesus Christ and Christian Fellowship Membership in the Church of Jesus Christ and Christian Fellowship shall be eligible to all who give evidence to their faith 
in the Lord Jesus Christ and who voluntarily hold to the fundamental doctrines of the Christian faith. I'm going to stop right there. How do you do that? It's super simple. I received a revelation years ago that outlined six questions. And they're right here in Article 5. Do you desire to come into the fold of God and to be called a member of his fellowship? Have you confessed of your sins to the Lord and repented of them? In other words, are you on the path of Teshuvah? Are you obedient to the laws of the land? Are you willing to bear another's burden that they might be light? Are you willing to mourn with those that mourn and comfort those that stand in need of comfort? Are you willing to stand as the witness of God at all times and in all things and in all places that you may be in, even until death, that you may be redeemed of God and be numbered with those of the first resurrection, that you may have eternal life? If you can answer yes to these questions, you're halfway there. That means that you voluntarily hold to the fundamental doctrines of the Christian faith. Now, the second sentence in the first paragraph of Article 5. When a person chooses to be a part of the Church of Jesus Christ and Christian Fellowship and involve themselves, they are automatically considered a member. How do you involve yourself? You come to meetings. So at this point, if you're watching these videos, again, you're, you're almost there. Now, the sentence in the second paragraph above the question reads, a member is one who attends regularly, serves at and contributes financially to the Church of Jesus Christ in Christian Fellowship, and can answer the questions that I just read. So three things there. One is giving evidence of their faith in Lord Jesus Christ. Like I said, that's the halfway point. The second one is attending regularly. And that can't be the other half because it's pretty small. You At this point, you're just watching videos. Eventually, it'll just be showing up to meetings. And you don't have to show up every week. If you're just showing up every now and then, that's enough. And the third one is contributes financially. Because how do you think we're going to build a tabernacle? How do you think we're going to move it across the United States? How do you think we're going to do these things? The Lord is going to bless us with financial resources that come from our members. So this is probably the biggest reason why I don't like the idea of building a church because I, I don't like asking for money. I have no problem giving of my time. I have no problem giving of my of my financial resources, what, what little I have at this point. I mean, I've got seven kids. But if we're going to do all these things the Lord wants us to do, it all can't be on my back. It can't all be on my shoulders. We need your help. We need you to be here, to be present. If you're called to a ministry, we need you to participate and take part in that ministry. If you have the financial resources, we need you to give. You can give once a year. You can give once a week. There are people that, most people sign up for a monthly donation but there are other people who just throw in a lump sum every now and then. And we're not asking for a ton. If you're already giving tithing to another church, we don't want to break you asking for a little bit more. If all you can give is a dollar, set up a monthly donation. We need that dollar. If you can do $5, that's all the better. If you can do 10%, that's a full tithe. I want you to understand that I'm not asking for this money for me. I'm not asking you to come to these things for me. I'm not asking you to answer these questions for me. I'm asking this of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Because... Through me, the Lord is asking you for your help to be a part of this work. In the first meeting I had with this council for the Sabbath services, I made the comment that I don't want to be the Pat Robertson. This is not my 700 club. I think that's the guy's name. I never did verify that. 
the more that I am the mascot for this, the more that my face is shown, the more, in my, in my opinion, the more that takes away from Jesus Christ. I want more faces on these videos. I want more people involved in this work. Not just because I'm an introvert and I want to run and hide in a cave. I'll, I'll be honest, that's part of it. But also because there needs to be other leaders that people can look up to. Other facilitators. So that we can be the prophetic people that the Lord has called us to be as Latter-day Saints. So my Thursday thought for you is, you've come and you've seen, what do you think? Is this work for you? What is your level of commitment at this time? And how can we grow that level? How can we grow that commitment? I want to see you succeed in building your relationship with God. That is my only goal. To meet that goal, we need the resources. We need the memberships. <clears throat> so I have asked, come and see. And I have asked, come and participate. Now I'm asking, come and be one with us. That's my Thursday thought. And I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ.